If you need help deciding whether Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown is the right Top Gun flight simulator for you, this video will answer all of your questions. We'll start with a 60 second, too long didn't read overview of the game, so you can tap out early if it doesn't appeal to you. After that we'll look at the detailed mechanics so you can get a real feel for what it's like to actually play the game. Then we'll finish up by answering some practical questions to help you decide whether Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown is worth your time and money today. The game is a flight simulator for those who love modern day fighter jets with a difficulty scale ranging from somewhat difficult and arcadey to I want to sit on the sofa, push a few buttons and watch things blow up. Although there is multiplayer with team based and solo battles, the main appeal is the single player campaign where you fight in a made up war on a fictional continent. The story is at best cheesy and at times boring but the surprisingly wide variety of missions are the perfect way to live out your Top Gun fantasies with superb feeling flight controls, immersive camera angles, and a wide variety of planes and weapons, including the Burt A-10 Warthog, though many planes are locked behind paid-for DLC. So, if you enjoy tense dogfighting, watching gorgeously rendered planes bomb the shit out of ground targets through multiple camera angles, and more cheesy one-liners than you can shake a stick at, then Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown might be your cup of tea. If you're still interested, then let's dive into the detail of the single-player campaign, which is where you'll spend the majority of your time. The game has 20 single-player missions that contain a surprising amount of variety, considering you're just flying around all the time. There are a ton of different weather conditions for you to fly above or below that confuse your missile targeting system, or indeed that of your opponents. There are missions where you have to fly below enemy radar, forcing you to fly in canyons. There are electrical storms, sandstorms, fog, and in approximately half of the single-player missions, the developer has thought of any conceivable reason for you to not simply fly in a straight line, adding just enough variety to keep things interesting. And it doesn't stop there, as your mission objectives come in all shapes and sizes too, from dispatching swarms of high-tech drones and stubbornly armoured gigantic aircraft, to striking ground targets ranging from deadly anti-air systems to vulnerable oil tankers. You'll be protecting friendly VIPs in transport planes, taking out bombers before they reach your base, and at one point simply acting as an unarmed decoy. And of course, there's plenty of dogfighting lots and lots of dogfighting, where switching to guns is a surprisingly viable tactic. So if you're concerned that flying around might get boring, this game has proven that there are, in fact, a surprising number of ways you can do it. However, where the game truly excels is in the feel of the controls, which can be simplified for a more arcadey experience or more detailed depending on your personal preference. Although it is possible to play the game using a mouse and keyboard, I personally found the controls far more enjoyable when I switched to a controller. It's just how the game was designed to be played. And of course, the premium experience is reserved for those who will be using a joystick. Whichever method you choose, steering your aircraft above the clouds, then down into a trench as you attempt to line yourself up behind your next adversary for the perfect shot, is as fun as you would rightly expect it to be in this kind of game. All while turning sharply with one eye on your radar to lose an enemy missile, while launching flares and watching your altitude and airspeed as you try to avoid stalling your engine, before strafing a series of ground targets while cycling your weapons as efficiently as possible in a time-limited encounter. The Ace Combat series has refined the dogfighting experience over many years, and although you could argue there are better alternatives out there, the core gameplay of Ace Combat 7 doesn't disappoint. In the campaign, you play the role of, surprise surprise, a pilot, who, due to the unfortunate circumstances of breaking the law, ends up flying in a squadron alongside fellow criminals, where nobody actually cares whether you live or die. The story contains well-presented cutscenes, half-decent voice acting, and a storyline where you can tell they tried really, really hard to make it dramatic and interesting, but ultimately the cutscenes are just so incredibly long and skippable. But although you may not get an Oscar-winning story, Ace Combat 7 gets it right where it matters. The flying, the mission variety, the planes themselves, and the visuals. Considering the game was released in 2019, the visuals put in a respectable performance. The planes themselves look great, 
with first and third person perspectives and small details as you fly through different weather conditions. And yes, you can look at them up close in the hangar for those who appreciate military hardware and want to take a detailed look at a Tomcat or a Raptor. The environment itself, however, is a story of two halves. Flying above, below and through the clouds looks great. Just try not to look too closely at the ground models, but then again, you'll be flying past those at 300 miles per hour. For those looking for American and Russian warplanes, you get a bit of everything from fighting falcons, tomcats, lightnings, raptors and warthogs to a variety of MiGs and SUs, along with a nod to the Raphael, Typhoon and Gripen for those who are that way inclined. If you want something a bit spicier than that, or more historic, you'll likely be disappointed. There are further planes locked behind paid-for DLC, but if you take a look, you'll find the options are rather limited. So, although the key players are there, I'd do a bit of research if you're looking to fly a particular fighter jet that I haven't already mentioned, as it is highly likely to not be an option with Ace Combat 7. You get to choose which weapons to take with you into each mission, depending on which plane you've selected and which weapons you have unlocked. There's a decent variety of air-to-air -air missiles and air-to-ground bombs, each with statistics that affect the range, the power, and the amount of homing the missile can achieve. It's not a bewildering amount of choice, but a reasonable consideration before heading into each mission that can affect your playstyle based on the mission at hand. At first, you only start with a handful of planes unlocked and a few weapons available, but soon you'll be unlocking new planes and new upgrades to your current planes by spending MRP earned through missions. You'll work your way along a reasonable sized tech tree, with the final spots being reserved for the Su-57 and the Raptor. Finally, it's worth mentioning that you have the opportunity to watch back each mission in full using a detailed replay system where you can shift between all sorts of camera angles and change the game speed so you can appreciate just how badass your last perfect run was. And I have to confess, this feature ended up being much cooler than I thought it would be. There are deathmatch and team deathmatch options to play online, however, when I searched for a room I found three, with a grand total of 14 players awaiting a match. Though it is possible to create private rooms so you can play with and against your friends, I feel confident enough to say that you should be wary if online multiplayer is your primary reason for considering purchasing this game. When you think about how many years old Ace Combat 7 is, there is a real possibility that there will be only a few strangers available to play against online at the time of your choosing. Hopefully by now you have an idea of what it's like to actually play the game, so let's address some of the more practical considerations to help you decide whether Ace Combat 7 is right for you today. The game will take you approximately 5 minutes to figure out, especially if you just open the menu and take a look at the controls, as you'll find there are only a handful for you to get your head around. Speaking of which, the game defaults controls to a simplified version, and I strongly advise any player to immediately switch to the more advanced control scheme, as all it really enables you to do is turn upside down and steer your plane that way, which to me makes the plane easier to control, not harder. The single player campaign missions are that perfect 20 to 30 minute length where even those who only have a spare hour to play can fit in a couple of missions before it's time for bed. That, when combined with the easy controls and forgettable story, makes Ace Combat 7 the perfect game for those with little time to gain. It's just easy to pick up and put down. You can play online multiplayer with friends, but you cannot play co-op with them on the campaign. There are an absolute ton of DLCs for this game, containing a handful of new missions and planes, but you really have to watch your wallet as buying only a handful starts to add up, and the amount of content you receive in return is questionable, especially when you're essentially buying a few reskins of aircraft you already have access to. It is also possible to buy a bundle of DLCs in sets, which are still rather underwhelming, but I would like to highlight the Top Gun Maverick aircraft set where you can fly the Dark Star, which I have to say is just very cool. There is literally no reason to pay full price for this game, as it's on sale at least once a month, if not more, with an 80 to 85% discount, and the same goes for the DLC and various bundles. I personally picked up the base game plus the Top Gun Maverick DLC for £12, 
and that feels about right considering the length of the single-player campaign, the progression system, and the lack of online multiplayer lobbies whenever I looked. Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown delivers exactly what a fan of the series would expect, and considering the deep discounts available on a regular basis, I have no hesitation in recommending this game to players who have fond memories of the previous instalments. For those military enthusiasts in general, it simply depends on whether you find the planes available of interest, as there is arguably a lack of variety, even when you include the DLCs. Basically, it's as far back as Top Gun, and then the more obvious aircraft up to the current day. I have to admit, the lack of Harriers or Tornadoes made me sad, and I'm sure there are plenty of other notable absences. This is not a realistic game. You can, at times, quite literally bounce off the ground and keep on going. I really mean it when I say the controls are either super arcadey or somewhat arcadey. If you're looking for realistic simulation, you would need to look elsewhere. For those new to the genre, I highly recommend picking up this game. It's cheap in the sale, easy to learn, and it's just fun to fly around and blow things up. If you're looking to chill on the sofa with a controller, or something a bit more immersive on PC with a joystick, this game knows what it is. A bucket load of fun. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask, or if you already own the game and have some additional information you'd like to add, please let us all know in the comments below. If you found the video useful, please leave a like and a comment for the algorithm gods, and if you enjoy this style of review, why not consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.